What's going on guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be looking and reacting to Jace going over the new power switches, the new power poles and well the power towers and all that kind of stuff. So normally I react to this live on stream with the community and the developers and all that kind of stuff being around and unfortunately I only stream a little bit early today to watch this so I know you guys uh, especially on the live streams or, 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 or some of the guys from Coffee Stain like to watch me go over these and analyze them and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'm going to do a, a video and then you guys here on YouTube can watch it as well. So without further ado, take it away, Jace. Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios. <laughs> Hi, Last week, we actually released a teaser trailer for some cool new features mm -hmm. coming to update eight, two new features. So just, just to clarify, I will be pausing through this. If you want to actually watch the full video without any interruptions, go into the description. I will be pausing it throughout this, so because I will be talking about it and my thoughts on a couple of things. And we don't know what these power switches are going to provide us. So is it going to blow my mind? Is it going to be underwhelming? Who knows? Let's find out. The priority power switch and the power towers. And if you didn't see the teaser yes. trailer, it'll be up here in the cards if you want to check it out. We did a reaction and to yeah, this and today on we're the live stream, but not on the uh, What those things YouTube. are and how they work. Now, a fun little fact is actually both of these features were kind of... We started making these way back in update four, actually. I think yes. the power... Way back in update four, um, they released a little teaser video. And in the new UI, it actually saw the power... Well, priority switch with a white box around it. Um, I, I, did, I, did, I don't think I covered it back then, but that was the video with the hidden trees as well, the new, the new trees that we were going to bring into the Northern Forest. So, yeah, so I, I wouldn't surprise me he's going to talk over that now. But I'm Our tower model has been done since back then, um, and the priority power switch we've leaked more times than a broken faucet, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember uh, there was one video where we were talking about new UI coming with resource wells and things like that, and uh, there was like there was, uh, two frames. I think it was two frames of the uh, <laughs> priority power switch in the build menu, and... You guys caught it. So we'll equip the uh, pressurizer. We'll plop that on there. Plop that on there. It's nice for them to be finally finished off and they're coming out with update eight. So that's exciting. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the power tower. Uh, this big bad the boy is going to be power tower. in tier four. In but before we go ahead, and whilst I've still got a few of you here, I want you to all go into the comments now because some of the developers will watch this. So I want you to put a nice message to cop the coffee stain staff. Uh, in the comments below. Um, just a kind message and all that kind of stuff. Just be nice, be humble, just be you. All right, so let's power towers, Jess. In a new milestone called Expanded Power Infrastructure, which is actually the name of a milestone in tier six. That milestone is now gonna be renamed into Logistics Mark IV. And then this new milestone added to tier four with the power tower and power storage will be moved into it. Okay. And that would be called Expanded Power Infrastructure. Expanded and power towers powers. have two attachment points. They have a top oh. and a bottom. There's a power top and there's a power bottom. <laughs> okay, so, they're going okay, so the way he's describing it is gonna, there's gonna be top connections, gonna be bottom connections. I didn't think it'd be two separate ones. I thought we'll point at the location, for example, like the two to pot will point at that one and connect it, right? Same with the one bottom. Uh, I expected the one on the bottom to be able to do multiple. Uh, don't make the don't make the joke, Jace. Don't make the joke. Don't say it. Don't say it. Power top and power bottom. <laughs> he okay. Did, he said it. And the different attachment points actually have. Uh, I think the top one has three attachments to it, and the bottom one has four. So the power tower can connect up to seven uh, connections at a time. Um, the top and the bottom attachment points have different properties. For example, if you uh, click a power line on the top. Uh, attachment points and you drag out, you'll drag out a power tower automatically. So going off the bat, my prediction was right when we talk about it, they do look like a two by two on, on a foundation. Uh, they are quite big and I'm guessing they're around 30 to 40 meters high. Um, they do look pretty tall boys. They Obviously they look shorter than a um, a normal watchtower uh, and they, they are obviously a lot smaller than the radio towers, which is what we kind of predicted anyway in the same way that power poles usually work when you drag a line out of out of power poles. And if you um, attach it to the bottom attachment point, that automatically pulls out a oh, uh, cool. power pole, which is oh, cool. generally speaking what you want to do. When so again, they've thought of things. If you connect it from the top, you're going to connect to another you know, pylon. If you connect it from the bottom, yeah, that's where you're going to dispatch it to your factories uh, and all that kind of stuff, or to the new priority switches and you're um, working with the power towers, you know, use the top attachment points for, to cover a lot of distance, and then the bottom ones to pull out power poles to nearby factories. Yeah. Another property of the power towers is that the top attachment point, when building out of that, uh, you can actually build cables about 
about three times as long as you can normally with power poles. So one of the main things about this power tower is the ability to uh, quickly and easily run long power Whoa. lines uh, a, a really long distance, right? Like great distances. Um, also, it looks really cool. You know, can you imagine these these power towers just disappearing over the <gasps> the zip lines? The zip lines. The zip lines are gonna be so much fun, and I'm guessing that's why they added the walkway because there was two versions, wasn't there? There was this version, and then there was the other one with the walkway that goes around it with the ladders. Horizon across the desert. I think it looks super sick. And this also means that the build gun when dealing with power towers actually has a longer build distance as well so that you can still build power towers really, really far away. It makes a lot of sense for the feature. So now there are actually two types of power towers. And if you use the uh, Wait, quick switch uh, radial menu, you'll see it. A lot of people didn't think it was going to be two. They thought it was going to be new walkways that went around. I, I, I sadly disagreed. Uh, I definitely thought there was going to be a, two versions. One with the walkway, one with not, and the only reason being was because of the zip lines and so you can jump off at certain points. And both there as well, so you can, you know, use quick switch for that. Um, and the two types are one with a platform and one without a platform. And the entire purpose of having the platform one is there's a ladder on it, you can climb up to the top, and then of course you can zip line across the uh, zip line, you know, really, really long distances. And this synergizes super, super well with the zip line sprint mode that we added back. Can we just take into consideration here this is totally off topic but obviously this is unreal engine 5 and there's a, obviously there's not a lot of things rendering so take this with a grain of salt you might have mentioned this in maybe their video or in their comments or you mentioned it to a friend but look at the render distance ignore the render distance right now you, obviously this tree's not loaded in so far that's because of the obviously the the new system they brought in with uh, unreal engine 5 but the new like color of the rocky desert looks nice i like the lighter sand it just looks it looks so much better especially with the like the new the new trees they brought in, in on day cactus, seven we had with this feature stuff. in mind when we added that feature and now it makes way more sense if you have the zip line with you because because you can be standing on a power tower with a with a platform and then pull out another power tower with a platform yeah. build it a long distance that's what we kind of do line, now sp with sprint mode power to get to the other power tower land on it and then rinse and repeat and you can, you can just keep doing that and you can actually run power lines quite far quite quickly and so that's how the power tower works next up is going to be the priority power switch yeah, we got the power top, the power bottom, and now we got the power switch. The PPP, the three okay. piece. <laughs> <laughs> the priority power switch is an advanced version of the power switch, and it is unlocked in the Mam Katerian research. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to pause this here real quick because I've not fully talked about this with you guys. I kind of talked it briefly in the recent YouTube video with the Let's Player, but not as a dedicated video. So the way I see it before he tells us is we have the power switch and then we have a connection to A and then a connection to B. Inside the UI, I'm going to suggest maybe there's a slider that if the power to this building goes to 40,000 megawatts or if the power drops uh, and this will stay powered. Um, so that's where, but I, I kind of confused with that because like, what if this is this, this? Um, but let's find out what it is. And I'm hoping it's something that's pretty poggers. Uh, and this thing is uh, actually super powerful. Um, it is the power switch they told you not to worry about, but uh, I'd be sweating. I'd be sweating. This <laughs> thing's crazy good. Let's get into it. So typically in Satisfactory, if your power consumption exceeds your power production and you have no power backed up in storage, your entire power network would just shut off. Right? We know We've this. all heard that sound. We all know and love it. What the and then normally you have to jump start your power plant again, right? So if you've got a coal plant, you've got to put biomass burners down to make sure you boot up your water generators to go back into your coal plant so that starts the chain reaction so this should fix everything our priority switch allows you to do is gate off different sections of your factory into different like power grids sort of which is what uh, as defined by the priority power switch and then it will allow you to assign each of those gated off segments a priority so that if the power were to fail it will start switching off the segments with the least priority in your factory so as to stabilize what your power production can actually maintain kind of like a circuit breaker right if a circuit if, if something breaks at one point it will flip this switch off but keep the other ones on and then start switching the other ones off until power is kind of met long story short it makes it so your factory doesn't shut down entirely so the way that this works is if you go up to the priority power switch you open up its menu there'll be a fuse Ooh. sequence tab and in it on the right hand pausing it right here fuse group one two three four five six seven eight undefined Okay, interesting. So all of these switches 
or obviously switches they place down and they place these down like for example main base second floor which is on fuse uh, fuse group three that's what they've called that one up on the second floor of that building if they put that in fuse group three anything from i'm gonna guess it goes from eight seven six five four and then if that if fuse group one two and three is producing the sorry if there's like twenty thousand megawatts you know being made you know and they're only could like hitting up to like eighteen thousand megawatts they will stay on right until more power is produced and then fuse group four will turn back on and all this kind of stuff hand side there will be like all of your priority power switches that I had a frog built, in my throat then, did you? Uh, and a bunch of fuse groups right and then you can just simply drag and drop your priority power switches Ooh. into whatever group you want them to be in and so when there isn't enough power in your factory your fuse groups will start turning off uh from lowest priority to highest priority lowest priority being fuse group eight highest priority being fuse group so just to go back here as well, like I said, if you want to watch the full video with no interruptions, go and check their video out. But also still go over there, like the video, comment. Thanks, Jace. Helps a lot, as you normally do. Uh, but I'm looking at these right here. So these are... I'm guessing this is showing that this coal power plant is switched on because of this. Um, obviously, we're going to get to the answer in a minute, I know. But I am just kind of want to speculate at the same time. Um, so I want to... So I'm guessing that these are switches show that, okay, the coal power is turned on. But if it was turned off, it would show it was off. Priority to highest priority, lowest priority being fuse group eight, highest priority being fuse group one. And it will turn off everything within those groups one by one until your factory stabilizes. And an easy way to remember these fuse groups is that fuse group one is for your number one priority buildings. So you want them to stay on as long as possible. Put all your power okay? buildings so, in there. So uh, a good use case for these, for example, is you might want to keep power production buildings mm -hmm. in fuse group one. That way they are the last buildings to shut down because if you lose power to your power production buildings, it can be a real pain generating power to get your power production back up and running again. Another cool feature with these bad boys is that you can actually modify the priority setup of any priority power switch from any switch, regardless of whether they are on a network or not a network at all. So you can just pop a priority power switch down in front of you and manage all of your priority power switches from anywhere. So they don't need to be connected. You can automatically put them in there and then start connecting them up. So as soon as you put one down, it automatically gets added to your circuit breaker fuse board, right? if you want. Not only that, but the priority power switches in the fuse menu have little like toggles on them, right? You guys see the little slider there? And that is to turn on or off remotely. That's huge. That is huge. So we can literally be in one factory and turn off something from the other side of the map. Like normally you'll create a central location where you kind of put everything right and switch it off, right? That's what you'll normally do. You can still kind of do that for aesthetic reasons to make a power tower still kind of do this, but to go up to one and go, okay, my heavy modular frames building doesn't need to be on right now. I'm going to turn it on for my plates building, you know, 1,000 meters away. That's Any pretty good. Cool. Any priority power switch from anywhere across the map. And I think this is a secret little gem of a feature. Damn right, it is. So this means that like, even if you're not relying right. on the whole like automatic trip feature to, to save your factory from shutting down, it's such a great way to turn on and off distant uh, factories that you don't want to, to take up power anymore if you don't want them to. <laughs> so... I think the best way to do it now is when you start a new save or something that you're going to be going forward to now is every building or every module building that you're going to be placing, make sure it's got power storage uh, and make sure you the, the switch. So it has to have one line that goes into the building, but if it's a spider web, you're going to have to remove all them lines and make sure that everything has a grid. This is why recently and well since about update five i've been talking about uh colored cables like we need to be able to color our cables we can go red is um like a line for example that's going to our modular building so everything that's a red cable that is going to our modular frame building everything that is green is going to our copper building um, anything that is yellow could be a light switch oh a light colored power so you know when you put a light switch down you connect a line to the, the, the lights. Um, and obviously, if you connect a power line to that, all your lights in your entire save go to that color. You know what I mean? If you flip the switch back, uh, which I've done it. Multiple people have done it. So hopefully, this is now the start of maybe in, uh, like talking about that idea and making sure that we're able to um, have our paint or power lines. You can just do it from anywhere. I think this is a really, really, really powerful um extra feature little mm -hmm. bonus feature to get here with the uh 
priority power switch. Now, yeah. depending on how you've built your power grid in your factory right now and how neat and tidy things might be, uh, in order to utilize the priority power switch, you may need to rework some stuff if you want if you want these benefits. One line Ideally, in, you want to isolate out. your different factories with as few in and out points as mm -hmm. possible, preferably only one in and out point, so you can just put one switch down there and turning that on and off will turn that whole segment yeah. on and off. So. so that's exactly what I just com what we always talked about then, but obviously I'll put a power storage in there to make sure that building, when it does get turned off by the um, the priority switch, that the power storage boosts boots up for that one building. You know what I mean? Anything that's super in interconnected is, is going to struggle because it's going to be hard to organize all those power switches. Uh, priorities power switch does not mean you'll never lose power to all of your buildings if for some reason uh, first of all, not everything has to be in a fuse group. You might leave some stuff off to the side and therefore oh, and the it undefined top? trip. Um, the That's other cool. thing is if for any reason, whatever fuse group you have your power in, power production in, for some reason, somehow doesn't get the power it needs, then it will still shut down too. So it's still entirely possible to shut down your entire uh, power network. But overall, the priority power switch is a super, super handy little tool, which will drastically reduce the amount of total factory-wide blackouts um, that you'll be experiencing if you take advantage of it. And I highly recommend you give it a go in update eight. It's definitely, definitely worth it, I think. And it's really not that hard to set up. Like you might just need to rework some power cables, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's super worth it. Yeah. Such a great little feature. Yeah. I think that's something a lot of people do when they restart a world or create a new world is basically make sure that's a priority. Um, I can't remember when he said that will get put in there. Uh, oh no, it's um, it's in the MAM, isn't it? It's in the Caterium MAM. So that'd be something to go with as soon as possible. Like as soon as, like for me, when I play, I always go straight for the smart splitter early on. And I'm gonna go for the power switch, I think early on as well. And then start separating things where they need to be, uh, which I'll probably do in the next Let's Play series. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do something in the current Let's Play series with this because we are about to build a mega power plant and I think this is the perfect time with update 8 coming out that we are going to redo all the power so keep an eye out for that it's like you got the big power tower it's like the dad <laughs> and then you got power party you're my dad Jess you're my dad <laughs> power switch good little boy you know you little, little pet on the head <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm too tired. And yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. So if you like those two features, leave a like and a comment down below. Thanks, Coffee Saint Studios, for designing amazing features. Helps a lot. You could do that. Let them know that you appreciate their work. And uh, yeah. I've already said, go in the comments. I said at the beginning of the, beginning of the video, go and show some love. Send a message to them. If they read it, they read it. If they don't, they don't. You still did it. So yeah, there we have it. So <sighs> update eight is small. So we've got Unreal Engine 5, we've got the new hogs, we've got uh, biome changes, we've got the power switches. What else am I missing here? There's got to be something else I'm missing. One of you guys will let me know. There's so much in this update. Like, it's not like, yeah, we're getting loads of new tiers. I know a lot of you are like, oh, yeah, but I want new tiers. It's not the matter of that. Like, the core base of the game is, like, still needed as well. Like, the whole world is the priority right now, right? Um, getting that done, getting some of the tiers kind of rebalanced. I think update nine is going to bring that in. Uh, we've not talked about this yet, but I think update nine will be, I think there's 100% going to be an update nine and that's going to focus on uh, rebalancing. It's going to focus on finishing the world off uh, and all that good stuff and maybe something new. And then when update one drops, we're going to get tier nine and 10. Um, but my prediction for uh, 1.0 is as of now, but now there's delays, it might be delayed even further. It was March 19th of 2024. And the reason being that would be the fifth year anniversary and it lands on a Tuesday. And as you know, with every update, they come out on Tuesdays. So maybe, maybe not. It's getting highly unlikely now because obviously the delay of update eight, but who knows, we'll see. Um, and just for marketing terms, right? Update 10, 1.0, you know what I mean? So. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other content here. And obviously, like I said, leave a message for the developers in the comments. And I'll see you in another video. So, keep smiling.